Hello friends, welcome to our channel. Today, in part 4 of Mastering Multi-Threading series, we will dive into a crucial topic for C-Sharp developer which is how to efficiently retrieve data from a thread function using callbacks. So, before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon, that way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Ok, without any further delay, let's get started. Efficient data retrieval from thread function in C-Sharp using callbacks. When we are working with multi-threading in C-Sharp, we often face the challenge of getting data back from a thread. This can be tricky, but don't worry, we have got the callbacks to the rescue. Before we dive into using callbacks for data retrieval, let's understand the concept of callback first. What callback is and why it's useful. A callback is essentially a function that gets executed once Another function finishes it for. It's an invaluable tool for managing asynchronous operation. Here are the just six crucial steps to efficiently retrieve data from thread function in C-Sharp using callback. What are those steps? Step number one, define the callback method. We begin by defining the callback method that will handle the data return from the thread. Here what I have done, I have created one callback method named calculate additional tax and print that is going to accept input parameter tax of double data type this input parameter data is nothing but the data returned from the thread. In this method, what I am doing, I am applying the additional tax amount 10 and deriving the total tax and printing into the console value. That's what I have written this one, right? Double additional tax is equal to 10.0, double total tax is equal to tax plus additional tax. And finally, the total tax I am printing into this console window. That's what this callback method is doing. Step number two, define the delegate for the callback method. In this step, we need to create a delegate that corresponds to the callback method signature. That's why I have created a delegate named calculate tax callback. Its signature matches with the callback method. If you notice, callback method and delegate have same signature. That is, return type is void and input parameter is of double data type. If you see signature of this delegate is having the input parameter of double data type. Similarly, this callback method is also having this input parameter of double data. So signature of this delegate and signature of the callback method is matching. That's what this delegate can point to this callback method. If you are new to the delegate, I have already created one dedicated video and I explained delegates in detail. I will be putting this link into this description of this video and you will be seeing the delegate video series link at the upper right corner right now. Okay, coming to the step number three, initialize the delegate and point to the callback method. And that's what I have created an instance of this calculate tax callback delegate and pointed this method, calculate additional tax and print, right? So that's what I have written this statement, calculate tax callback, callback is equal to new, calculate tax callback and here I am passing this callback method name, right? Calculate additional tax and print over here. That's how we need to initialize the delegate and point it to the callback method. That's what I have done in this part of this step number 3. Coming to the step number 4, define the thread function that accepts input data and callback delegate. In this step, we need to create a thread function that takes input data and the callback delegate as parameter. And so that's what I have written this thread function calculate tax it is having two input parameters right the first one is the data which is nothing but amount over here the second one is the callback delegate that's what i have mentioned calculate tax callback over here and if you notice calculate tax callback is nothing but the delegate is pointing to the callback map right so here this calculate tax which is nothing but the thread function is going to accept two input parameters the first one is the data that is amount over here and the second one is the callback delegate is nothing but calculate tax callback over here. Now, what this method is doing, we will be calculating the tax over here. So, that's what this method is doing. And finally, we are returning the tax by calling the callback delegate. That's what I have written callback and here I am passing the tax that got calculated from this method thread function, right? That's what I mentioned over here, tax calculation here, that will be stored into the tax variable of double data type. Once the tax got calculated, what we are doing, we are just returning the tax by calling the callback delegate over here. So this statement is just going to call the callback delegate. And once we call this callback delegate, if you see, it will go and call this callback method over here. So this double tax is going to receive the tax data that we have calculated from this thread function. That's how we are going to retrieve the data from the thread function in C-Sharp. Okay. Now, coming to the step number 5, create an instance of the thread class that points to the thread function. Here, we need to instantiate the thread class and specify the thread function along with the input data and callback delegate. 
So that's what I wrote. Thread t is equal to new thread and calculate tax amount callback. Here I'm passing two arguments over here. The first argument is the amount that is nothing but the input data and the second one is the callback which is nothing but the callback delegate over here. So finally we need to kick start the thread to initiate the asynchronous operation. That's what I have written t dot start over here. So that's it. So these are the six crucial steps by which you can efficiently retrieve data from the thread function in C sharp using callbacks very easily. Okay so let's switch to the visual studio and see all these things in action. Okay so here we are on visual studio. Here we are going to see the demo of how to retrieve data from thread function in C sharp using callback. That what I have done, I have created one console application named get data from thread function that has one program.cs file. In program.cs file, there is a namespace named get data from thread function that has one class named program. In program class, I have defined the callback method as a part of a step number one. What I have done, I have created one static method calculate additional tax and print that is going to accept one input parameter of double data. This double data type is nothing but the data is going to get returned from the third function that we are going to receive it over here. What I am going to do over here, I am just going to applying this additional tax over there. Here what I have done, I have created one variable additional tax of double data type and assigned 10 value to it. Then I am just going to derive the total tax by adding this tax that we have received from in this function and then I am applying the additional tax over. Basically I am just adding tax plus additional tax and going to get derived the total tax. Whatever the total tax we are receiving is a part of this calculation we are printing into this console application. Now the part of step number 2, I have define a delegate for the callback. See this callback method. Its signature is return type is void and input parameter of double data type. Similar fashion, I have defined the delegate signature. So I have written public delegate void calculate tax callback and double tax. Here if you see return type is void and input data type is of double data type right and this calculate tax callback can safely point to this callback calculate additional tax and because the signature of this delegate and this callback method are same. Now there is a main method which is an entry point of this application. Here what I am doing I am just printing this statement retrieving data from thread function in C sharp using callback because I am just giving the demo of this concept. Then as a part of a step number three we need to initialize the delegate and point to the callback method. This delegate will be called when the thread is done execute. So if you see I have created one instance of this calculate tax callback and that's what I have written calculate tax callback callback is equal to new calculate tax callback and here I am pointing to the callback method that's what I have given this callback method name over here. calculate additional tax and print so this is the step number three I have implemented over now what I'm trying to do I'm just printing this statement into console window enter amount to calculate the total so what this statement will do it is just going to print into this console it will wait for user to enter the amount in order to calculate the total input data we are going to capture in with the help of console dot read line statement here I have written double dot try parse console dot read line out double amount whatever the amount user is going to put I'm just going to capture into this amount variable of double data type which is of the out parameter. But let's suppose if user is not putting the valid data, the amount, let's suppose the amount when we are asking the amount user is putting a string value. That is not a valid amount, right? So that time this is valid amount will contain the false value. And then what I'm doing, I'm checking whether this is valid is true or false. If is valid is true, it means user has put valid amount. If it is a valid, so we need to implement this step number five. So before the implementing this step number five, we need to define this calculate tag, right? So we need to go to the step number four, where we need to define the thread function that is going to accept input data and the callback delay. Here in calculate tax method, what I'm doing, I am passing two input parameters. First, the data. Basically, the input data is going to get feed into this calculate tag. Second one, I am just passing the callback delay by which I can return the data from the thread function. Right? That's what we need to pass these two parameters over here. That's what I have defined into this calculate tax method over here. So, if you see this calculate tax method, I have declared one variable tax of double data type. Right? And I am checking. If amount is greater than 1000, I am going to apply tax of 5% of the amount that we received as a part of input parameter over here. That's what I have written tax is equal to 0.05 into amount. So whatever the tax is going to get calculated, we are storing into the tax value. If amount is less than 1000, then I am just going to apply the tax 2.5% of the amount that is entered over there. Right? So that's what I have written 0.025 into this amount tax will get calculated and into this tax value. If, if the amount is greater than 1000 or less than, in either way, we are going to tax. 
based on the applied tax over right now what i am doing i am just making the thread to sleep 1000 milliseconds then in line number 36 i am just calling the callback delay this is the way how we are going to return the data from the thread function using the callback delay i have just called this callback delegate and here i am passing the tax that i have calculated within this function right what this callback tax will do it will go and call this method calculate additional tax and print double tax right so here we will be getting the tax that got calculated from the calculate tax method function and we have received the data from the third function over here so here we will be getting the tax and then i am applying the additional tax over there and finally i am deriving the total tax and printing into this console window so that's what this flow will go right now coming to the step number five here what I am doing, I am just creating an instance of the thread class and calling this calculate tax. In calculate tax method, I am passing two input parameters. First one is the data that we have received from the user over here, and I am just calling the callback. Callback is nothing but the callback delegate over here that I have defined as a part of a step number three over here. So this thread will be responsible for executing this calculate tax thread function, right? And this calculate thread function will be receiving two input parameters. The first one is the amount. The second one is the callback. This calculate tax will derive the tax and then return to the callback and then the finally, you know, the callback method will get executed and print this statement into the console. But it's going to happen. Finally, as a part of a step number six, I have started the thread with the help of a start method. That's what I have written t dot start. This will make sure that thread will start it. Then it will just call this method and all those things will happening. This valid amount variable is having the false value. Then else part will get executed and not a valid amount enter will get printed into this console. So that's what this program is doing. Okay, let me execute this program. See this output. Okay, so output got appear into this console window. If you see, it is printed. Retrieving data from thread function in C sharp using callbacks. This statement got printed that I wanted to print right into the console window. Now, this statement got print enter amount to calculate the total tax. Here we need to put the amount. Let me put some amount. Let's say I'm just putting 6000. Okay, and then I'm clicking this enter button. So, see the total tax got calculated 310. Okay, so let me close this and put some wrong value to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to execute one more. Time. So now I'm just putting some wrong amount instead of you know double, I'm just putting the tax value, of, just clicking this enter button. See, not a valid amount enter got. User has to put the correct. That brings me to end of my session. Sum up in this video, we have learned what callback is. Following just six steps that we discussed just now, we can efficiently retrieve data from thread function in C sharp using callback. I hope this video has been informative and helpful. That's all for this video guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.